all love Disney movies. They're as warm and cozy as mom's apple pie. But there's a dark side to Disney just beneath the surface. Want to know the most twisted part of Tangled? Stick around until the end to find out. First time with the things? Smash that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. Now let's find out the dark side of Disney you never thought about. Draining the life from island after island. Frozen. We all love Frozen. Who hasn't sung Let It Go at the top of their lungs in the car or shower? We're all guilty of it. No one can deny the music from our favorite frosty film is catchy. What's not to love about the characters, the story, and the art? Behind the beautiful backgrounds and joyful music is a dark secret no one really thinks about. Let's take a look at where this happy story took a turn for the worst. Elsa's magic is pretty epic. She spent most of her life trying to hide it and all of her emotions. After years of repression, she decides to set herself, her feelings, and her powers free. We're 100% about her big girl power liberation, but what about the consequences for everyone around her? When Elsa let it go, she plunged her kingdom into a sudden winter. Everyone was going about their business on a beautiful summer day, and suddenly everything was frozen. The first thing to die would have been the plants in the kingdom. That would include all of the food crops Elsa's people needed to get through the winter. In one second, she created an instant famine. Plants wouldn't be the only thing suffering. Tons of animals would have been caught off guard, totally unprepared for this sudden cold snap. They'd be left without food and some without adequate shelter. Even people could have died as the temperature dropped. That's a dark fact we just can't let go. Elsa, stop! Anna. Monsters, Inc. Okay, so there's more than one dark aspect of Monsters, Inc. For example, there's an entire society of monsters traumatizing children on purpose to exploit their fear. Um, who wrote this movie? Did they know it was supposed to be family friendly? That's messed up. Let's ignore that nightmare scenario and talk about something no one even seems to notice. A major part of the plot revolves around a little girl sneaking into the monster world. Everyone is terrified of her, which is pretty satisfying. It almost makes us feel better about the whole child abuse thing. Almost. Boo appears to remain in the monster world for a whole day. She even goes to work with Mike and Sully. She's missing from the human world for probably 24 hours. When Sully finally brings Boo back to her room, it's completely undisturbed. It looks exactly the same as it did when she first followed Sully back to his world. Uh, where were her parents? Did no one notice a toddler going missing for an entire day? We get that not everyone has the same parenting style, but no one came to check on this baby for a whole day? Her bedroom should have been filled with cops, or at least looked like it had been searched. Maybe Boo would have been better off staying with Mike and Sully. At least they kept track of her whereabouts. Mostly. Oh, sorry, she didn't see that. Toy Story 3. Toy Story is one of the highest grossing franchises of all time. Woody, Buzz, and friends have made their way into hearts all around the world. These movies not only gave us some of our favorite characters, but also some of the catchiest tunes in Disney history. One of the most popular and beloved Toy Story films was the third installment. This movie was an exciting lead up to the emotional final film. This beloved movie has a really twisted scene. Woody, Buzz, Jesse, Rex, Slinky, and the Potato Heads all find themselves trapped in an incinerator. This is usually the part in any animated movies that our heroes find a last minute escape in an unbeatable and moving scene. That eventually happens for these faithful friends. It doesn't come until after one of the darkest moments in animated film history. Before they make their courageous escape, the gang all decides to accept their fate. That's right, they feel so hopeless that they give up. They all hold hands and wait for death. That level of hopeless resolve is pretty grown up. That kind of dark emotion isn't usually a feature in children's movies. There are some seriously adult themes. Where's your kid now, Sheriff? Madagascar. Madagascar is a playground for anyone looking for dark movie moments. For example, the lemurs are being eaten alive by the fossa. Sure, it may be scientifically sound, but this is a family film. Please stop eating the furry little animals. If you're willing to accept the lemur feast, there's one part we should all probably talk about. When the penguins discover they're headed to Africa, they decide that's just not going to fly with them. They do what any normal crew of flightless birds would do. They overpower the human crew and seize control of the ship. Normal, right? When the penguins get reunited with the main characters, Gloria the Hippo asks what happened to the human crew. The penguins joke that they killed them and ate their organs. We killed them and ate their livers. 
Only Gloria seems to have reacted to that. The penguins assure her that they are only kidding. Don't relax just yet, though. They say the crew is actually on a slow boat to China. That's a poker phrase that means a journey so long it may never reach its destination. So basically, the penguins left them tied up in a ship drifting at sea. The crew is basically dead. Yikes. The penguins are really psychotic. Tarzan. Tarzan is definitely full of inappropriate moments. The story begins with a horrifying shipwreck. If that wasn't traumatic enough for the audience, there's more horror to come. Tarzan is a sweet, innocent little baby. He's trying to survive on a jungle island after his parents survived a horrible shipwreck. Naturally, Disney writers decided to spice things up. Tarzan's parents meet an untimely end. It's not uncommon for Disney movies to include the death of a parent. But this was just brutal. Baby Tarzan watched his parents be eaten alive by a leopard. What? That's not even the darkest part of the movie. If you made it through the shipwreck and the loss of his parents, you're in for another shock. The main villain of the story is a horrible guy named Clayton. Don't get us wrong, he is definitely the worst, but his death is just brutal. He gets himself tangled up in vines while he fights Tarzan. In an attempt to free himself, he hacks away at the vines. Unfortunately, he doesn't remove the one wrapped around his neck. Clayton loses his balance and falls from the tree, hanging himself with his natural noose. The body isn't shown, but the shadow of his feet is visible. That's just ghastly. Moana Moana is one of the most refreshing Disney films to be released. The film lead is a strong, independent, and super relatable. Who hasn't felt pressured to be something that just doesn't feel right? Haven't you ever felt like the world expected you to be one thing, but your heart wanted something else? It's a struggle we can all identify with. Couple that with beautiful art, entrancing music, and hilarious jokes, and you've got an instant classic. Moana isn't all uplifting, soul-searching, and goofy demigods. There's a really twisted detail that everyone just laughs off. Shiny bad guy, Tamatoa, isn't exactly a nice crab. He tries to eat our heroes and is a jerk about Maui's stuff. We don't have any sympathy for him or anything. At the end of the movie, Moana and Maui flip the giant crab onto his back. He's totally stuck. He wouldn't be able to defend himself or eat. Left in this position, his fate was sealed. He would slowly starve to death. That's a gruesome end, even for a bad guy. The slow, lonely, painful death Tamatoa faced is one of the grimmiest in animated history. No one seems to be alarmed that he's trapped either. As the credits roll, the audience laughs at the trapped crab. It's not like he's a nice guy, but does he really deserve that? The Good Dinosaur the Good Dinosaur is supposed to be an uplifting story about friendship and acceptance. That message does come across, but so do some really dark and inappropriate moments. The film is about Arlo. He's a small dinosaur who is afraid of everything. His siblings pick on him for being the runt. They enjoy scaring him. Arlo is determined to make his parents proud on their family farm, even if he's terrified. In classic Disney movie fashion, little Arlo sees his father die right before his eyes. That's not even the most inappropriate moment we're going to talk about. Arlo finds himself befriending a little human he calls Spot. The two of them are lost and far from home. Not to worry though, Spot has some great survival skills. Before long, Spot secures them a tasty meal when he finds some delicious red berries. The two feel like they've hit the jackpot. That is until they try a few that have been sitting around a little too long. After eating the questionable fruit, both Spot and Arlo get a serious bit of the giggles. They even start to hallucinate. After their euphoric romp, the two crash pretty hard. Scenes like this used to be pretty standard in animated films. These days, any kind of altered state is pretty rare in a family movie. This moment stands out as being a little intense for something rated PG. The Little Mermaid even the title of this movie sounds wholesome and sweet. The Little Mermaid sounds like a cute movie about a tiny mythical sea creature. Sure, the movie definitely makes us smile, but it has some dark moments. Ariel seems to have a serious identity crisis. What's so wrong with being a mermaid? Why can't she accept herself the way she is? Once you look past her obsession with humans, you can focus on a much darker detail that basically gets passed right over. When we meet Ursula in her underwater cave, she isn't exactly alone. She has her eel of course, but there are quite a few more inhabitants of her home. In a dark, dingy corner, we find Ursula's collection of lost souls. These sad little green blobs were once merfolk too. They had their own dealings with the sea witch and are now doomed to life as a pile of goo. The expressions on their faces say it all. Some are stricken with so much sadness, while others seem to have been driven insane with grief. The Garden of Lost Souls is one of the darkest parts of the original story. Hans Christian 
Anderson wasn't afraid to go to some pretty twisted places with his writing. You turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. Mulan. When we think of dark Disney films, Mulan isn't the first title that springs to mind. Usually we hear the name of this brave warrior and think of catchy tunes and empowerment. The film manages to balance a plot based on war with uplifting moments really well. There are a few dark moments in the story. Mulan's father deciding to face the hardship of war when he's already disabled is one of them. With his physical struggles, he's resigning himself to a swift death on the battlefield. The film gets even darker when Mulan and her fellow soldiers reach Shen's village, they find it burned to the ground and smoldering. The audience is wrapped up in the grief Shen feels for his father, but the horror of one small detail seems to be glossed over. A tiny doll is found in the ashes. The implication is clear. It wasn't just adults that died in the village. The doll served as a depressing symbol of just how unforgiving war is. It doesn't care if you're young, old, sick, anything. The doll reminds us all that violence is devastating. It's a serious detail and one that is super creepy. My father should have been here. Captain! Tangled Tangled is one of the cutest Disney films of all time. We can't get enough of the beautiful colors, happy songs, and fun characters. I mean, come on, that chameleon is adorable. And Flynn's horse has so much personality, he's a main character. Who can resist the love story between Rapunzel and Eugene? It's definitely not the darkest Disney movie out there. There is one detail that is pretty messed up and no one ever talks about it. Rapunzel's beautiful golden hair is magic. Not just because it's so long and always looks freshly brushed, we mean it's literally magic. She can heal the wounded and even restore the dead. Those aren't your everyday locks. It takes more than the right hair mousse to do that. What's messed up is that when Rapunzel's hair is cut, it loses its magical powers and turns brown. That's a messed up message to send to little girls. Blonde hair is magical and can perform miracles, but brown is just blah. Brown is just what you're left with when all the magic is gone. This isn't a new idea. People have assigned stereotypes to hair colors since variations first appeared. Haven't you heard that blondes always have more fun? Or heard jokes about gingers? Rapunzel was beautiful as a blonde, but she's just as beautiful as a brunette too. We hope you liked this look into the sinister side of Disney. We'll catch you next time.